Hey everyone, so today what we're going to be doing is just going over some basic maintenance and just a little bit of tips you could do for your gaming laptop that will really help performance and just expand the, the life of your actual laptop. Um, here, we actually do, we have a razor blade here. You can see this one, it does have an i7. It has a orange trackpad, so I'm not too sure exactly what year that is or if that's a custom or anything like that. Um, this is going to also go into like other laptops as well. You don't have to just have like a razor laptop. We're going to be going over this one and how to do it because this... This one's a little bit more straightforward, but you can also do this on any other laptop uh, if you have a gaming one. It's really hard to say to recommend this because if you open up your laptop, you can always, there's always a potential to damage it. Always do, use extreme caution and be very careful whenever you do open up anything like that. Um, what we're going to be doing mainly is just adding something called thermal paste, and we're also going to be cleaning some fans and just doing some basic little cleanups that we can actually see here that sometimes can damage the laptop and affect performance, especially if it's getting really hot to the point where you can't touch it. Um, uh, that could also be an issue as well, but at least this will help kind of prevent uh, these type of things. You can do it uh, every six months, a year, two years, if you really want to, uh, anytime you ever see. A good actual way to do it is to check that actually at the bottom here to see if there's any dirt or debris. You might see some of the fans that need some intake and to push air out, they'll go in through here and they'll push air out. This is one of the easier ones. If it, there's a little net here, you can also s you can see if it's really dirty, you won't be able to see through it. This one's actually very clean. Um, so we're just going to be going over that today. Um, it's, you can use it on any type of laptop, right? But uh, let's just get started. So what you want to do first is just uh, open the, the back cover of the laptop. Uh, most gaming laptops, especially if they're pretty new, they will have just a bottom cover that will expose everything on the actual laptop itself. Um, a lot of the newer ones do, just newer laptops in general have this. Some well, if you have ones that are beneath a screen or anything like that, like a surface, then you're definitely more... Go ahead. So if you do have um, any other type of newer laptops or anything like that, most of the time you just open the back cover. Everything should be exposed right there. Uh, some of the heatsinks might go underneath or the fans just to remove it. It might go underneath the actual laptop. We do have an MSI actually putting thermal paste and cleaning it up right there. You should go ahead and check that out in our one of our previous videos. Um, you can see it because you have to usually remove the board from the other side to, to get to the fan and just clean the fan. So once you want to do, of course, open the bottom cover. Once you see the bottom cover, always, 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 can't stress this enough, makes you unplug the battery. Because if you're doing any of this while the, the, the laptop is turned on, you can cause a short and you can damage the laptop. Not to mention on top of anything else, especially opening a laptop, you need to ex have extreme caution and make sure that um, you do handle everything with care. Each connection is very easy to tear and to, to damage, and it's very easy to damage your laptop. Usually, on if, if you're lucky enough, uh, especially like this model, you just have three screws on each side for the fan, and it's really easy just to take up. And once you do remove those fans, what you can do is you can use um, that toothbrush that you used in the morning. You can use that to clean it. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, you can use a toothbrush or something that has some bristles. It's a good way to do it to at least clean the fan. Um, you can clean it. You can just brush it off each side. A lot of the fans, a lot of the fins in the fans actually are very easy to damage. So doing it this way is a very nice and delicate way to do it. Um, you can also, of course, use a blower as well, which we'll also do, but you just want to be very careful when you're using an extreme um, air compressor or anything that's blowing it because it's very easy to damage fans and damage the motor inside. So uh, if you're going to be doing that, try to do it from a little bit of a distance there. Otherwise, you can just brush it down and just clean the fan each way, and you'll just see the dust come off. It's nothing really too difficult. To, to really take off, you just need to be careful because again, it's very easy. If you damage the fan, then you definitely need to get another one because you'll be definitely risking the, the life of the laptop overheating. All right, so once you do both the fans, what you want to do is you can remove the actual heatsink itself. Now, this part is very interesting um, for the heatsink. Once you remove the heatsink, you can see that there is some thermal paste there. You'll see these other little pieces they look kind of like thermal paste but they have a little bit more of a substance there and that's the call of thermal pads and what it's going to be doing is pretty much the same type of thing what a thermal paste does but um, usually the manufacturer likes to use the thermal pads for heat transfer so the rule of thumb for anything like this is whatever the manufacturer did you should just continue to do because they're the ones who made the laptop and they engineered the laptop so if you see thermal paste on the the chip if you see thermal pads on the coils and components, you should definitely put them there wherever they have it. 
even if it's on a small part there, you definitely want to make sure because that means that thing is going to get really hot and it needs to transfer that heat to somewhere. So whenever you do have a heat sink, you usually see some that extend a little bit more out and they're not just covering the CPU and the GPU, but they cover the components as well. And this will be for, for the heat to transfer to that heat sink and then it'll be pushed out to where the, the fans are and the fans will push out the heat outside the laptops. That's what that's all for. So it would be good to put a, a decent amount of thermal paste on the both the processor and the GPU and then just reapply if there's um, if you need to add another thermal pad definitely reapply them there. Thermal pads you just want to get uh, a nice name we use the we use the Arctic ones so they're pretty nice uh, they're pretty thick and actually you they're cool to the touch whenever you do touch them so if you get a nice uh, sheet of pad you can just cut them as it is and then you could put it on each component individually if you want to do that or if you want to do it um, I like doing it a little bit easier way and better ways you just put it the thermal pads that are on the actual heatsink itself exactly where they were before so then you can just peel them and then put them back and you don't lose track of any of them because once that heatsink goes to flat down sometimes it's, it's just a little bit easier to lose track all right so once you're done you can put everything back you want to make sure that uh, you, sc you screwed all those um, heatsink screws in correctly sometimes they'll be labeled like one through ten or one through six and what that means is that's how you you can undo them and put them back in um, you want to make sure that you screw them in uh, not enough where it's going to um, to damage anything, but you just want to make sure it's tight enough where you don't have to put uh, that much force in. So once you feel it start to get pretty tight, then you can just stop it. It's very important because the CPU and the heatsink need to make a very good contact for heat transfer. It's very important. If you leave even one screw that's a little bit higher up than it should, it won't be touching as well and you will get an overheating system and you can damage the CPU and the GPU there very easily. Also a very easy way if you look on the back cover you can just grab the same brush that you used before and, there and there's just a little bit of dust there for the intake fans and it's very easy just to, s just to scrub that. Um, you can use a toothbrush, it, makes, it does a very good job, you don't need to actually blow it or anything like that. And once you're done with everything, of course just plug it back in, make sure all the screws are tightened enough, uh, make sure nothing else is loose or missing and uh, you want to make sure you always put the screws in back the right way they were supposed to and then you can just put the top you can put the bottom cover on and that should be it all right guys so I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on just an easy basic maintenance to do on any type of uh, laptop you can do this on a, especially on a gaming laptop it's a little bit more important because the the thermals really do matter and uh, if you do have at the, at the thermal haste if you see that's getting a little bit hard which means is that the, the heat transfer isn't going to be as good and it's going to cook that CPU or GPU and you always want to make sure that it's it's up to date and it's it's a it's a nice amount of thermal paste and it's a fresh thermal paste. You could do this every six months, a year, maybe around there. That's probably okay for especially for laptops. If you're in a dustier environment, of course, you want to do this a little bit sooner. Um, you don't have to always put thermal paste on. You pr probably be good for about a year or two on each type of thermal paste. Um, for dust, you can always clean out. It just depends on your real environment again. But um, it's just an easy way to do it and extend the lifespan of your device. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Find this very, very informative. Please leave, leave a like if you did. It really does help us a lot. We're almost at 5,000. Hit the subscribe button. And uh, we're going to keep pushing and uh, keep giving, delivering you guys content. We try to make tips. We do lots of liquid spills, data recoveries, lots of fun things here, especially at a computer shop. So when you guys get to know what we do every day at a computer shop, if you're ever really interested anyways. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye.